Okay, today we're talking liver fluke, but I want to focus in particular on sheep. So the same type of fluke will affect both sheep and cattle using the same intermediate posts and I suppose the same life cycle. A fluke infection in sheep can be much more dangerous than in cattle. That's because cattle have a better immune response to lots of immature flukes suddenly invading the liver. And they're the ones that do the damage, folks. By the time a fluke has matured, maybe nine, 10 weeks, all it's really doing is laying thousands and thousands of eggs a day. The, the damage to the liver at that point has been done. There might be a bit of anemia being caused by a mature fluke, but in terms of you know, clinical fluke as we know, pouring holes through the liver, it's the immatures that do the damage. Triclobendazole, the active ingredient in Tribex, is currently the only one that would kill all stages of fluke, including earlies. Can we reduce our reliance on triclobendazole as our sole means for removing immature fluke from the system? To answer this question, we must understand what's required for fluke to proliferate. We need two things, the intermediate host and lots and lots of fluke eggs spontaneously hitting pasture. Our intermediate host is a tiny snail whose activity is based on prevailing weather conditions, so we can't really control him. But can we control the source of eggs? It's a case of being proactive and moving in with actives that will kill mature fluke in advance of snail weather. Snail weather is moist conditions above 10 degrees Celsius. But for example, we go with something like albex or ritter fluke around February time, just before the weather heats up in the spring. That will remove any egg laying mature fluke from the system, so that when the snails come out later on in the year, there'll be less larvae for them to act on on pasture. Next week we'll have simple protocols for both housed and outwintered flocks. Look at a farm case study.